Welcome to Ayurveda with Ariana. I am Ariana. In today's episode, we are talking about how to live an Ayurvedic lifestyle in the fall season, or just how to live a more balanced lifestyle in the fall season. Now, Ayurveda really takes into account energy, and energy is changing in the seasons as well as with foods and within us. Ayurveda actually identifies six seasons, one being monsoon season, which is in between the summer and the fall. Right now, is, for me today, is August 24th. So we're in that ending the monsoon, se- monsoon season, and we are going to be transitioning into fall about mid-September. So having the knowledge, having the wisdom of Ayurveda now can help you place more awareness and identify the areas in your life where you can be more balanced where it will affect your health, it will affect your mental health, etc. So let's get right into it. The cute little presentation I made is going to help you identify what is Ayurveda, how does it affect you, how do you fit into Ayurveda, and what can you do starting today to live a more balanced life. So Ayurveda is a theory of medicine based on habits and imbalances developed in ancient India. In Sanskrit, Ayurveda means the science of life. Ayurvedic knowledge originated in India more than 5,000 years ago, and it's often called the mother of all healing. You will also hear it referred to as the science of yoga. That's how I got into Ayurveda was I practiced yoga and still do for years. And then I got to a point where I wanted to practice yoga in a more medicinal way, which would be the path of Ayurveda using herbs and food and conversations and different energies, using it as energy medicine, but in a tangible way. Ayurveda places awareness on prevention, right? Keeping you in balance. And that helps to encourage a balanced lifestyle through um, a balance in one's life, through your thinking, through your diet, through your, through herbs. But um, before we get to taking medicines or herbs, we focus on other things first, the routine, the lifestyle, your relationships with people, with food, how you eat, what you eat, etc. So know Ayurveda and you will know how to create this balance of body and mind and consciousness according to your own individual constitution and how to make lifestyle changes and bring about and maintain this balance because there are some lifestyle recommendations that might fit some people based on the energy of the recommendation, but it might not fit for other people. So in the fall season, some people might feel more creative. Other people might feel more anxious. So the routine there might be different depending on one's constitution. Ayurveda identifies three types of energy, and that is present in every one and everything, which is vata, pitta, and kapha. So you can find these energies within people. People might be more dominant in a certain type of energy. Food might be dominant in a more certain type of energy. Situations, relationships. So vata is the combination of space and air or ether and air. It's thin, it's dry. It can be, if it's over, you know, if it's too much vata, it can be nervous and anxious. This is also the quality uh, of lightness, airiness, quickness, restless sleep, sensitive to cold, a very active mind, creative, energetic, um, maybe even a little bit ADHD or anxiety, these things that you kind of identify with as symptoms, uh, but we use them as qualities to help us show what energy we're operating in. So then the pitta would be a fire and water. When you think about fire, well, what is the quality of that? That's hot, right? So fire and water people in a, in a human would be more of a medium built. They're hot, they're athletic, they're prone to more, maybe more muscle, also maybe prone to inflammation, intelligent, competitive, really driven, hard, hard working, hot tempered, maybe irritable when skipping meals, um, goal oriented, sharp intellect. 
And then we have the kapha types, which is water and earth. Those are the stocky builds, uh, cold, damp, like their skin might actually be damp. Um, and you, they might think, well, you know, I'm a heavier build. I should be warm, but they are actually feeling cold and damp and steady, um, gains weight easily, heavy sleeper, easygoing, very fun, very loving and nurturing, very compassionate and affectionate. And that's the combination of earth and water. And if you think about it as a substance, not just a person, what do you get when you mix earth and water together? Do you get kind of like a sluggish, muddy substance? And you can kind of think about how different foods can either food combinations or food in general can either hold that substance of sluggishness, uh, maybe like cakes, right? Those very sugary, thick, heavy things can make you feel kind of sluggish. So that's just an example to get your brain thinking about the dosha types. Ayurveda also identifies um, these energies within the time of day and also within the seasons, okay? And it can be a lot to absorb and think about, but again, just keep it simple. There's three energies. You find them in all things. The times of day, we find that pitta, that fiery, fired up energy between 10 and 2 a.m. and p.m., And those times can kind of fluctuate really depending on where you're at in the earth um, and really where, where, how deep you study in Ayurveda, but this is just a general sense. So between 10 AM and 2 PM, there's that fiery hot energy. Um, And if we add things to it that can throw it out out of balance, if we add more fire to the fire, it can make it overly irritable right? So if a pitta is fiery and working really hard during that time, um, and we don't nourish that part with maybe something kind of grounding or relaxing, then that pitta can get very angry at that time. Do you ever notice that you hit that three o'clock PM time frame and you're sluggish, but right before that you were really fired up. Or if you wake up in the middle of the night, because it's 10 AM to, or 10, I'm sorry, 10 PM to 2 AM, the 10 to two, if you aren't asleep by then, then your thoughts really kick up, right? You get really creative or inspirational and you want to do things and it's hard to fall asleep because now you're no longer in that relaxed state. Um, so that kapha period, 6 AM to 10 AM or 6 PM to 10 PM, that's the time frame where you're getting more relaxed. That's when you want to get ready to do family stuff, a light dinner, do your routines and then go to bed before you hit that pitta time, before it activates being awake. Because in that pitta energy, when you're sleeping, can digest the thoughts throughout the day, the energy, your food, etc. Now, vata time frame is that 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. or 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. <laughs> so you'll notice that, it, oh, I woke up at 3 a.m. And that's so common for people because that wind of vata makes it very light. Remember, vata is like air. It's very light. So then you're a light sleeper at that time. So it's good to get up during that time frame. Uh, you know, in the fall season, which we're going to go into deeper detail, you actually want to, um, get up around five 30 and begin the exercise around 6 AM. You're transitioning into that kapha time and you really want to get in that exercise. So you can do the exercise in the vata time or in the kapha time, but I like to do it kind of transitioning into that uh, time frame or whenever I can really fit it into my schedule. But I prefer to do the exercise in the AM versus the PM because in the PM in the fall, we really want to focus on that relaxation and you're going to get more energy in that AM time frame. So what I want you to focus on other than, okay, what am I? Am I a Vata? Am I a Pitta? Am I a Kapha? What's my constitution? What should my Uh, focus be. Your focus should be on your diet, your food, and the relationship with your food. All you need to do, and you're never going to find a place where you have perfected Ayurveda or you have mastered Ayurveda completely. This is like a lifelong study to really feel comfortable, um, you know, diagnosing people, et cetera, in a very in-depth way, you're going to study for 10 years in Ayurveda. So really take your time. And it's about bringing a certain level of awareness with you throughout each experience and coming back to learning. You're not going to watch one presentation and learn it all. You're going to come back and learn more new things over and over and over. 
So the focus with food in your diet um, will be to eat, and I'll give you a list of foods for fall, but give you to eat something that is going to balance. So if the fall season is very vata, which it is, it's a vata season, which is very light and mobile and cold and dry. You want to balance that. So what's the opposite of light and cold and dry and mobile? You're going to want to take the qualities that balance it and apply those to food. Um, things that are very grounding. So you're not floating and flying with the air and the wind, you know, sweet potatoes, butternut squash, carrots, soups, because they're warm. And then you also want to focus on your lifestyle and routine. The same concept applies to the lifestyle and the routine. You want to add things to balance. So an exercise routine, the, how to balance light and cold and dry and mobile well, the opposite of that for exercise, what would that be? It'd be more stabilizing, more grounding, maybe slower movements, longer holds, more breath, more awareness, maybe not practicing at 100% capacity. Your routine really supporting the relaxation. And, um, and then you're focusing on your herbs and your treatments. In Ayurveda, there are a series of different treatments that you can do that maybe can blow your mind if you've never seen them before, but are so beneficial. I'm going to give you a couple today that you can take with and start to study and practice on your own, but I highly suggest when it comes to herbs and Ayurvedic treatments to work with a practitioner. Um, Let's go deeper into the fall season. It's the sixth, I'm sorry, there are six seasons. It's not the sixth season. There are six seasons. Ignore that top line. There are six seasons that Ayurveda identifies. This one is Sharad Ritu, which is the Vata season. Fall is the Vata season. Again, cold, dry, light, mobile. The more you hear me say those words, the more it's going to stick in your mind when you're moving and navigating through the fall season and you start to notice these qualities around you. The herbs that are recommended to take uh, during this time, again, you need to do your own research. If you're going to take herbs by yourself, please don't just start ingesting a bunch of herbs. There are precautions. There are suggestions and dosages to take and guidelines to follow herbs that are suggested during this time are ashwagandha, um, a j- an herbal jam that I'm going to go into, into greater detail, uh, teas with ginger, licorice, cumin, coriander, fennel, and then joint support. And I don't just mean regular joint support supplement you're going to find on the shelf at Target and Walmart. I'm talking about specific herbs for joint support. And I have some great herbal blends from very reputable um, Ayurvedic doctors that formulate them. So reach out to me directly. My email is ariana, A-R-I-A-N-N-A at ayur-vive.com. That's ariana at A-Y-U-R-V-I-V-E.com. Okay. For the fall season, exercise. Exercise between 6 a.m. and 10 a.m. or 6 p.m. and 10 p.m. Do it at 50 to 70% capacity. With an emphasis on yoga, the yoga routine or exercise routine to lower or pacify specifically vata and pitta dosha. Vata and pitta energy. Fiery, hot, motivated energy as well as the anxious, flighty energy exercises to help lower that quality foods during this time soups sweet potatoes miso cooked apples ghee butternut squash carrots maple syrup honey the list goes on there's plenty of things online on pinterest on google you just type up cute little recipes ayurveda recipes for the fall i think i just spit a little bit anyways abhyanga now this is a practice This is a treatment, but it's something that you can do yourself. And I'm going to show you Abhyanga is self massage with oil. So the oils that you're going to use for your Abhyanga routine during the fall season, you can, if you have one specifically for your dosha, your dosha type that you like, or your skin that you like, use that oil. But I suggest either sesame oil or an herbal infused oil for your dosha type, which I do make myself where I get, you know, certified organic bulk 
oils and then I formulate the herbal infused oils specifically for the dosha type. There are oils that are better for vata than they are um, for pitta and kapha and vice versa. So get with me or go to my website at www.ir-vive.com and look at my shop. I will be putting up handmade formulas up there for sale. Also in the fall time, emotional wellness. This is a time for inspiration. This is a time for new ideas. The movement of blood from the extremities to the core increases blood flow to the mind. So inspiration and new ideas are going to take off during this time. But if you do not balance that with relaxation of the mind and rest, then you're going to fall into that anxious overthinking state where you can't, you feel like you can't get anything done with your new ideas, with your good ideas. So just like a butterfly, like it has to have that cocoon, that rest time to be able to come out of the cocoon for it to flourish into this new version. This time you might emotionally be prone to stress. So your number one tool um, if, to keeping a healthy immune system, especially in the fall season before you enter winter, is going to be keeping the nervous system stable. So keeping the nervous system stable through the fall should be your number one goal. Don't max out. Don't make yourself max out at 100% during the fall. Have a level of awareness. Your blood is changing. Your organs are changing. Your energies are changing. Support that with lifestyle, with food, with thinking, with choices. Colors, you can wear them or just notice them or have them in flowers or around you in your space would be red and yellow, orange and white. Of course, I go to black all the time. Um, yoga in the fall. What are some poses that you can practice more of or focus on in the fall? Forward folds, bending and twisting. These poses, specifically when you hold them for a longer period of time, or if you're slower to enter them and exit them, that can help to keep vata and pitta from being aggravated, right? If we're like quickly moving through a yoga flow and jumping up and down, that can aggravate the already winded, airy vata. That can aggravate the already motivated, fiery pitta. Now, if you find yourself very sluggish and really finding yourself in that over, overly, um, overly, uh, what am I trying to say? Your, if your kapha is out of balance and you have an over abundant amount of kapha, then you know you would change that and fire up maybe some pitta energy so you don't feel as sluggish. Um, but just in the fall, generally speaking, this would be the go-to for exercise. For strength training, again, practice between 50 to 70% capacity. Um, you know, you know, specifically weight training and weight lifting. Of course, if your goal and you have goals and you're going heavier and you're going heavier, that's that's great. Just have a level of awareness between how you move through sets, how you move through reps, with a, with awareness on making your breath follow. The body has to follow the breath. So the breath is what guides the movement. The breath is what takes you to that next level. And if you can keep it at about keep it at about seventy percent, with other focuses being on stretching and diet and food. Okay, so routines, Ayurvedic routines for you to start to incorporate in your life today, even though you maybe you know nothing about Ayurveda, maybe you know a little bit about Ayurveda, today you can start incorporating Abhyanga, self-oil massages. Why would we do Abhyanga? It's not just to have, oh, I'm touching my skin and I feel better. You're taking these oils and it's penetrating into the bloodstream and it's affecting your liver. It's affecting your brain. It's affecting your nervous system. It's affecting your entire health. I, if I had to pick any one practice to continue to practice to feel good, it would be this one, especially as me being Vata. I am predominantly a Vata Pitta type of person. I don't have many Kapha qualities and when I do, they're very specific to a situation or a season. Not for me naturally. I'm naturally vata, which means I'm naturally prone to dryness. I'm naturally prone to being deficient, uh, naturally prone to maybe to overthinking and worrying. So 
my skin can get dry. My nervous system can get really activated. Um, my circulation can get high or low, but sometimes low, especially if I'm feeling really cold in my fingertips or my toes. I can have very you know light sleep and be prone to insomnia. So all of these things can be balanced with Abhyanga. By the way, Abhyanga can help balance all three doshas, not just Vata, but it is so important during the season of fall. This ancient practice is so simple, but it's so effective. It will balance all three doshas. At the same time, it will help to eliminate toxins, but also replenish the skin, the blood, and the liver, especially as a Vata type and in the fall season of Vata if you are to detox, if you are to eliminate, if you are to get rid of toxins from the body, you want to make sure you're replenishing them at the same time and not leaving yourself deficient. So a guide to self Abhyanga. Let me see if I can zoom in here. I can. Okay, great. And this is something I just pulled offline. Um, and this, you can use it in a very specific way, a technique for lymph drainage. Um, increasing the blood circulation, pacifying your nervous system, etc. Uh, you don't have to follow the exact technique. Get the oil on your body and start massaging it around to begin, right? That's step one. Step two is, you know, you start to connect with it in a deeper way and you start to maybe be more mindful about how you're doing it. A good rule of thumb is that we do long strokes on long bones and circular motions on the joints. So your joints, where would your main joints be? Maybe your neck, your shoulders, your elbows, even your wrists, your knees. I like to do my ankles too. I like to do my hips. Um, you can do in the center of the chest. You can do over the, the chakra points, you know, circles. But getting this, it, it, it has to be warm. I mean, you can do it with room temperature oil. That's fine. But it is best for penetration reasons, if it's oil, I mean, if it's warm, I just boil some water and I'll have, you know, a cup of oil and I'll put it in the hot water and it just kind of heats it up. Or you can have an oil warmer. I do not recommend, <laughs> I do not recommend microwaving it. <laughs> um, you can sit in a warm room or you can sit in your bathroom and just put on a shower. I like to make sure that my Abhyanga oil is staying on my skin for at least 20 minutes. So you wake up in the morning, you do your morning routine, and Ayurveda can give you way more pointers on how to have a very customized morning routine. You get up, you know, between 5, 6 a.m., you do Abhyanga oil on your body, and then maybe you do some yoga. And then you get in the shower and you don't even have to use soap because oil will get so deep into the pores. It will clean your body better than soap will. And it will leave you nourished and replenished. So that's a really helpful tip, but start doing that today. Get an oil for your dosha type. Come to me, come get a consultation by me. It's very simple. We schedule a phone call together. I have you, um, take a, you know, answer a series of questions. I do an assessment on you and we discover together the best oils for you based on your dosha type, the best routines, the best exercises, etc. But if you don't want to do all that, just order an oil through me or through a trusted source and start practicing. Get this oil on your body. Routine number two to incorporate nasya oil or nose oil. Again, please order a nose oil through me or through Banyan Botanicals or Sawanti or a trusted source. Please make sure that it is, you know, uh, non-GMO. You can get certified organic, USDA certified organic. There are some incredible practitioners out there. I do not recommend just finding something on Amazon. You do not know where these oils come from. You're putting it into your body or especially up your nose. Um, you can also make it yourself. Joyful belly is the school I'm, I attend currently for my Ayurvedic training and you can make your own nausea oil yourself. You get, you get a base oil, you get some herbal ingredients to add in and you drop this no nose oil through your nostrils. See how this first person over here is laying down and you can put, depending on the oil, three to five drops in each nostril. You let it drain back into the sinus cavities. And this is so great for allergies, sinitis. I mean, literally I used to have allergy problems 
And I cannot believe I used to also, I also have a deviated septum from uh, drug addiction in my previous years. And I used to always get sinus infections. This has changed my life. Not only am I super into the physical benefits, but I'm also into the spiritual and energetic benefits from being a yogi for so many years. I love that this, when I put it in my nose, can it help to activate my mind and the clarity of my intuition and being able to connect with that? Being a Vata type, I'm so prone to overthinking that I almost cannot gather my thoughts together to figure out what I actually believe in or I don't sometimes when I'm in that state of worry. This helps to keep my mind very concentrated, very focused. Um, at the same time, the physical benefits are, are abundantly clear. It clears mucus blockages. It opens blocked pathways throughout your whole face and head and can relieve headaches, treats nasal infections. I will say, do not combine this with neti pot. If you are a practitioner of neti pot where you're pouring the water, you know, with the saline solution through your nose, please choose one or the other. Don't do neti pot and nausea oil in the same day. You can go back and forth and switch them. Um, you know, like, uh, okay, during this time I'm using nausea oil or during this season, I'm using nausea oil during the fall season. The nausea oil is going to be more beneficial because it's more replenishing. Of course, if there are extreme blockages, uh, and bacterial infection, you're not going to want to use the oil. You're going to want to use the neti pot. Oh, there we go. And number three, herbal jam or herbal remedies. Now, this is something that I want you to study, not necessarily implement unless you are comfortable and knowledgeable on herbs, or if you're working with a practitioner, you can work with me or any practitioner that you trust that has herbal knowledge before consuming this. If you take prescription medications, please research every single herb and ingredient um, so you know how it's affecting you to prevent unwanted effects. This incredible herbal jam that I take, it, it has, it includes all six tastes in Ayurveda. Um, it includes a large combination of herbs. It balances all three doshas. It can be used on adults. It can be used on children. I take it every day. And Shavuan Prash, that's how you pronounce it, Shavuan Prash. Um, I'm trying to see if I have my bottle here. Let me go grab my bottle and show you. So I get this brand from Sawanti, uh, and this brand is made by the Ayurvedic doctors that work at the, um, the location. They see clients and patients and they make their own blends of supplements, jams, oils, etc. To me, it smells so good. The first time I ate it, I was like mind blown by like the taste roller coaster I went on. And now I crave it. I want to eat it. A lot of people will mix it in hot tea. I eat it just straight from the jar, just plain. And I would if I had a spoon on me right now. Um, I take about a teaspoon a day. I'm a small person. Um, you know, I'm 5'1", 107 pounds. Mm -hmm. But for an adult, they can take up to three teaspoons a day. Um, people have different dosages on that. So please look into that or schedule a consultation with me and I can go into that deeper with you. But I, I mean, it gives me energy. I can tell it helps my gut. I mean, I have been diagnosed with diverticulosis, endometriosis, gut issues, stomach ulcers, all types of like reproductive and tissue issues within my torso, right? Organs and the gut. This has helped to not only heal all of that, but give me the energy and help to balance my hormone and my mood swings. I have extreme mood swings and hormone imbalance. Other doctors, Western doctors wanted to put me on thyroid medication, progesterone cream, hormone, other hormone replacement therapy. And I did not resonate with any of that through the use of herbs and through like this Shavuan Prash, I have been able to find peace of mind, balance, and also, um, ownership an ability to change the way I feel with a certain level of awareness. So, uh, Shavuan Prash provides a multitude of health benefits. It can help with immunity. And since this is the fall season going into winter, right? 
it has so a lot of vitamin C in it and an incredible amount of nutrients in it that it can help you with your immunity and energy levels. Like you think if you're addicted to coffee, like I, like I have been for a long time, this is going to help you helps for a healthy heart with digestion. If you're prone to diarrhea though, if you're having a lot of diarrhea, I wouldn't take it during diarrhea because it will help to eliminate toxins at the same time as replenish the gut. Very good for vatas. Revitalizes skin cells, respiratory functions for lung health, and improves your strength. Herbs for the fall season. And again, work with a practitioner, research them, study them, fall in love with each one. Find the qualities of each one and take your time with them. It's not a race of knowledge, but a lifelong wisdom, practice of wisdom. Ashwagandha is really great for the fall, especially for the stress and the overthinking and the worry. Shavuan Prash, you'll see it spelled a few different ways. Or you can just look up Ayurveda um, herbal jam. Medicated ghee, so you can make your own ghee at home, which is clarified butter. Or you can uh, buy ghee or have medicated ghee. I will make medicated ghee here and there. Um, Just check on my website to see if it's available for purchase or not. Teas with ginger or licorice, cumin, coriander, fennel. You can also add those into your foods. And then joint support. Um, so discover more about yourself. Discover more about Ayurveda and how to take ownership of your life, your lifestyle, and create not only a system that has worked for 5,000 years, but create that in your life for your family and for generations to come book a consultation with me discover your dosha type and an ayurvedic plan for living a balanced life i'll help you go through yoga certain types of exercise food herbal recommendations specific oils hand make you oils ayurvedic routines catering towards balancing your doshas i hope you enjoyed today's presentation thank you so much Again, head over to my website at www.ir-vive.com, my YouTube channel, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.